Hello, hello, Instagram. What's up? I'm gonna talk for a few minutes. I'm gonna ask her, and I'm gonna ask her some questions. If you're following me from uh, TikTok, welcome. Let me know if you're following me now, and I'll welcome you here. Here's a question: How did you break into Hollywood and get your first script seen? I've talked about this over and over, Zaro. So, what I would recommend you to do, uh, if you really want to know, because it's a long story and it's too long to answer here, but uh, go check out my podcast. I talk about it all. You know, I've mentioned it over and over on my podcast. My podcast is called Screenwriters Need to Hear This. I think the link is in Screenwriters Need to Hear This. The link is in my profile, I believe. But you'll you'll find it. You'll it's, we, it's everywhere. Go to michaeljammon.com and you'll and there's a list of where to listen to my screenwriter, my uh, podcast, and see so you know how I broke in. How do you? How do I get an agent? Well, Beverly, I did a whole 45 minute t- uh, YouTube talk about this. It's on my YouTube channel. So my YouTube channel is at Michael Jammon Writer. Go subscribe to that. I got different stuff on YouTube as well. And go watch that talk. It's about, uh, it's, it's about 45, why is she texting me? It's about 45 minutes. And uh, it'll help. It'll help. Hiya, Eileen. Appreciate your insight and post. Well, thank you. Sup. Do you ever write other people's ideas? Absolutely. If someone wants to pay me to write their idea, I'd take that money. I take it. If you are in the, by the way, let me do a quick plug and then we'll answer some more questions. That's my poster for my one man show. If you are in Los Angeles or Boston, come see my show. It premiere, uh, not premieres, it's not premiere anymore, but I'll be in Boston November 12th and 13th doing my uh, stage reading for my upcoming, my, uh, upcoming work, a paper orchestra. Tickets are now on sale for the Los Angeles and Boston shows at michaeljammon.com slash live. Get them now while you can because they will sell out. I did six shows in L.A. Uh, in August. They all sold out. It's a small venue, so if you want to come see me, I'd love for you to come see me, but get them now because they'll, they will be gone. Uh, and I hope to see you there. It's an hour-long show followed by like a 25-minute Q&A. We talk about the work. We ask all the questions. We get you to laugh. We get you to cry, and then we say goodbye. What does a, a one-sheet consist of? A one-sheet basically breaks down... You know, a one sheet, a true one sheet is a poster. You know, that's a movie poster. Any tips for stand up comedians? Get up there on stage. I mean, what kind of tips do you want, Brandon? I'm, I'm, you're asking me how to be a stand up? Like, what specifically? Have you ever considered moving over to corporate communications, AA, AKA the dark side, sort of kidding? I'm a CEO. Margaret, I, I do some public market every day. That's all I'm going to answer. I'll answer your question. Uh, what do you do? I do public speaking, Mark. Uh, no, it's Margo. Sorry, it's not Margaret. Margo. Uh, you want to? You want? I'm happy to come to your corporation. You're a CEO. Uh, I have a number of talks. If you want to, you can re- you can email support at michaeljammon.com, or you can DM me here on Instagram. And if you want to book me to do public speak at your corporation, I don't, I don't know how big your company is, but I do a couple different talks. Hmm. I've done them in the past. I've done them in the past. I know a lot about marketing because I ran, my wife owned a company called, uh, a girls clothing company called Twirly Girls. So I did all the marketing, which is storytelling, right? Marketing is just basically telling your brand story. Uh, I could talk about that. What's it like working with wood? Oh, wait, you're not Norm Abrams. Hmm. How do you write a novel? Do you plan the main points first or just started writing it as it goes? Oh, no, you know, no. I mean, I'm not a novelist, but you, I don't think any novelist would ever recommend doing that you almost always start with a you beat you you break it down you, you beat out the story you figure out what the points of the story are you write an outline yes i'm go i'll check it out okay i'm on a low level position on a tv show on the warner brothers lot are there things i should be trying to do to take advantage of that time i have in this project well I, michael i don't michael santos films i don't know what your goal is what is your goal? What do you want? How much do you need to be ready to? How much do you need to be ready to pitch? Still the goat. Are you talking about me or are you talking about you? You need a lot more than I do. Are you getting any new questions these days? I don't know. As a producer, how do you feel about cold emails? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a television writer producer, but I don't I don't get cold emails and I don't respond to them. Uh, a lot of people, you know, now that I'm, you know, on on social media a lot. A lot of people reach out to me thinking that I'm going to make their career, and I, I simply can't do that. I can't. I don't have the time to answer all that. If you want to reach out to other producers, they'll get less email than me, but don't send it to me. I get swamped by it, so I, can't, I couldn't possibly. I feel like I'm giving back by doing these lives and by posting every day. I feel like I'm doing more than my share, you know, but I can't. People think, well, people say to me, can I take you out for a coffee? No. 
Absolutely not. I don't have that kind of time. You know, everyone wants to do that to me. But you'll get, but you'll get a dollar fifty worth of coffee. Yeah, I'd rather make my own coffee. Uh, I'm an experienced PA. How do I start getting jobs that lead to becoming a producer? Good for you. Uh, I mean, Buddha. I mean, if you are working hard on a show and ingratiating yourself and doing a good job and making an impression, those offers should be coming your way naturally. You know, and if they're not. You might not be doing a good enough job. You have to stand out. And I talk, go watch some of my videos. I talk about how to stand out as a PA. That's what I would do. But for the most part, PAs don't do that job for longer than two or three years tops because they get snatched. If they're, if they're doing a good job, they get either promoted or snatched up by somebody else and promoted. No one expects you to be a PA for longer than two or three years. That's, that's enough. How do you stay grateful? Good question, tenuous naturally. I was going to do a whole video on that. I do. I have a morning ritual that I do every, uh, every other day. I should do it every day, but I do it after the end of my, uh, this run. And so I do a morning gratitude ritual. I'll, I'll do a post on, my, uh, on that, so keep following me. What's your fee or going rate? For what? Jack, Jack Nick Jr., what's my going rate for what? More accurate, re most accurate representation of a writer's room in a show. Most accurate representation of a writer's room in a show. I don't understand your question. Will you bring your one-man show to NYC? Jake Vitarelli. I certainly will. I've been asking a lot. People have been asking a lot. What, at some point, I will. I don't have plans yet. I mean, m my sister, who lives in New York, was like, hey, do a show here. Uh, I don't have plans yet. I'll probably, when the book comes out, I'm certain I will do a show in New York when the book is out. But what I would ask you to do is just... Um, Jake, just DM me here your email address and say New York City, and then I'll keep you posted. And anyone, by the way, if you, whatever city you live in, do that as well. So that, uh, you know, if you want me to come to your town, uh, that way I can notify you, you know. Any books or classes or recommend specifically for writing a multicam sample? Eileen Alvarez. You can check out mine. I, uh, I have one called, you can go to michaeljammon.com slash course. This is what I teach. I teach screen, I mean, I'm a, I'm a screenwriter. I'm a full-time professional television writer. But I, over the pandemic, I created this, a course when Hollywood shut down. Hollywood shut down for six months. I had nothing but time. I built a course, put it up there. It's still available. Go check it out, michaeljammon.com slash course. You are beautiful. You got that right, Qveen. Favorite dark comedy? That would be Marin. Marin was a dark comedy. My partner and I ran that for four seasons. I would love if you broke down a Ted Lasso script. Uh, I bet you would. Kelly, uh, I don't break down Ted Lasso's scripts, but I break down other scripts in my course. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, most of my po my posts are about three minutes. You know, three minutes is as long as I do, and so I couldn't possibly, uh, I couldn't possibly do that in three minutes. But I do that in my course. My screenwriting course is like fourteen hours, so that's what I have there. Is it more difficult to start writing a show from scratch or being brought in mid series? Is it more difficult to start writing a show from? It's definitely more difficult to start from scratch, but I don't mean, you know, that that you're you're inventing everything. Do you have an opinion about catchphrases? I try not to use them. Any tips for writing stand-up comedy? Oh, got you, Brandon. No, <laughs> no, I don't. Watch other comedians. You have to get your voice. What do you want to talk? You know, what is you? If, watch a lot of stand-up and find out who's resonates with you. Who do you like the most? And then see if you can do your version of what they're doing, you know? And because comedians are very different, you know, uh, what Dave Chappelle does is very different from what Mark Marin does. What, Mar what they do is very different than what, um, uh, Jesus, anyone else does. I mean, they're very, they're just, what they talk about, how they express themselves. What's that guy, uh, what's that guy? Ah, oh, crap, I can't remember his name now. He's very funny. There's all, it's all sorts of different guys. Uh, the guy, the Greek guy with the, with, the, with the banks. What the hell is his name? He's very funny. Uh, anyway, you know what we're talking about. Watching from the shower. Oh. As a writing tool, would you recommend tvtropes.org? No idea. Never been there. Don't plan to go. Cool. Good to know. All right, Margo. Maybe we'll talk. What's best website to sell a script? I don't think there is a best website to sell a script. Ab absolute must do for a first-time screenwriter? Oh, must do well rick most screenwriters first time are have no idea what they're they have no idea how to write none and they don't even think they just think well i've watched movies i can therefore write one doesn't work that way that's like saying i live near the airport 
I watch planes take off and land all the time for years and years. I can fly a plane. And they, they just don't. Most screenwriters, new screenwriters, literally have no idea what they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. And that shouldn't come as no surprise. I mean, you know, I would study. I would take classes, learn from somebody. Learn before you, before you start thinking, I'm going to sell this. Learn, you know. And get on my watch list, by the way, Rick. I, have all, I give away a ton of information. And I email it for free every Friday. It's all free. So if, if this really interests you, just get on it and watch my videos. Uh, that I, that I add new stuff every week. It's Michael, the, to subscribe, it's michaeljammon.com slash watch list. What's your next question? Which character, which character that you've written for have you enjoyed the most? I loved writing for Nina Van Horn. I loved writing for Dale Gribble. But I, I wouldn't say the most. I mean, I don't know about that. Have you worked with Mark Marin? If... I want to do a callback. Yes, of course, I worked with Mark for four years. We love bringing in different ways to communicate and storytelling. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about. What city are you in, Margo? What city are you? What city is Margo every day in today? Uh, let's, here, oops, whoopsie. Um, yeah, well, we can figure something out. On Disney, Selena Gomez appeared in Hannah Montana before having a show of her own, Wizards of Waverly Place. Was this by writers to test the waters of, or coincidence? Uh, no, that's just how it works. I mean, no one gets a show. You don't start off as a star. You start off as a guest star or a day player, basically, and you work your way up. No one's going to give an unknown a show. So you don't just start off at the top. You got to start at the bottom. People think that it's... They're going to start at the top. What's your best tip for plotting a new show? Brooklyn. I don't have one best tip. I I don't have one best tip. I have a course on that. It's a 14-hour course because it's a lot. It's not like... That's the problem, Brooklyn. i got to be honest with you. If you would ask this question to somebody else who doesn't know what the hell they're talking about, they'd give you their best tip as if it would be helpful. As if it all it takes is a best tip. I, I, there's so much, I, you know, that's why I teach it in a course. It's like a lot. There's a lot. I don't have one best tip. There's no like, eh, just do that. And then then off you go, go to the running, off to the tracks. It doesn't work that way. Um, again, I'll give you all my tips, all of them on my watch list as best as I can for free. That's my newsletter. But if you really want to learn story structure, if you want to learn how to plot a show, which is what you're talking about, that is in the course. That I don't talk about here. That's, you know. That, that's something, you know, that's for serious students. Okay. You can go find out more at michaeljammon.com slash course. Did you ever think of changing op- occupations? Um, no, I mean, I've done this full time for 26 years. It's paid the bills. So I haven't had to, but there are certain other writers have to because, you know, the well runs dry eventually. But I don't have that. When I do change occupations uh, at some point, it'll be because, you know, I want to try something else with my life. Um, but uh, it's not because of, uh, I've had a good run, in other words, you know. How do you feel about screenwriting competitions or one of those pay for script note sites? Basically, Bram, I'm going to be honest with you. I would never pay for script notes in a million years. Who's giving you the notes? What the hell do they know? Who are these people? Now, if you could find a retired writer, a screenwriter, and look at their credits and read their work, because now they're not in the business anymore, if you could find someone like that, pay them. You know, if they've worked, if they've worked a lot, but I would never use a site ever in a million years. You're going to find people who have absolutely no experience as a writer giving you notes and you're going to be paying them and you will be a schmuck. You would be a schmuck to pay someone for their opinion. As far as screenwriting competitions, I think there's some good ones. The big ones, Nickel, Sundance, um, Blacklist, you know, maybe Austin, some big ones, right? But the little ones, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. How can I pitch my ideas and to whom? It doesn't work that way still. The goat. Listen to my podcast. I talk about this in my podcast a lot. Screenwriters need to hear this. How to deal with hate comments on social media? Good question, Dragos. Very good question. I did a couple of posts on that as well. For the most part, I, I don't get a ton, but I do get some. I do get some haters. And it boggles my mind. Usually I just block them. I just block them. But... It boggles my mind. It's, you know, if you're a creator, if you're someone who's creative and you're putting, you have the balls to put your work out there and people are going to come tear you down because that's what happens when you share of yourself. 
people who have no courage would do, it's so much easier to tear down than to build up. So they'll try to take you down. And these people are lower than, lower than dog. They're just, I have no patience for them. Uh, there are haters and there are unhappy people. Unhappy people got to tear down because they don't know how to build. So my advice for you, if you're getting that, just block them and move on. Just block them and move on. Don't even engage with them because you can't. They're just fools. They are just, and most of them are hiding behind, uh, you know, anonymous names. They don't even have the courage to say something. They would never say this to, you, to your face in real life, but on the social media, uh, they feel em- empowered and emboldened. Yeah, and from the basement of their mom's, from their mom's basement. Look, you got to just block these guys and move on. You can't even, you can't even give them the time of day. They're too stupid. They're just too, too. What is that behind you? This is a poster. Let's see. This is a poster for my upcoming show. If you're just joining, come see me. I'll be performing in Boston, November 12th and 13th, and in Los Angeles. Look at this guy. On, uh, uh, in, De- in December. My one-man show, Paper Orchestra. Uh, coming to Boston and L.A. for tickets. Go get them now. MichaelJammon.com slash live. It's a small venue. It ain't Carnegie Hall. It's Carnegie Small. And uh, so there. Come see me. It's a great show. I got a lot of... I just The tickets just went on sale for the L.A. show, even though that's not till December. And I'm already getting people buying and It's already the people... I already recognize most of the names. They're people who already saw the show earlier in August, but they're coming back to see it again because I'm performing new stories. So, um, so they're like, yeah, they like, they like the last show. They'll see, they, they'll see the new one. Do you verge onto other social, onto other media platforms as far as writing inspiration, like YouTube, younger generation things? I don't understand what you mean. Do I verge onto other media platforms as far as writing info? I don't know what that means. I post on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm going to start posting on LinkedIn. Uh, so I, and I'm and I'm on YouTube and I have a and I have a, a podcast. What are the best tools for a screenwriter to get their work noticed? You are looking at it, Zarek. Social media. Go watch my post on that. Go watch my post on that. I talked about what I would do today to get discovered. Probably in a month or two ago, I, I posted. So go watch that. What is your fee to write a pilot script? It just depends on who I sell it to. Uh, some networks and you pay less than others, uh, but it's a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of money. Was Spade fun to work with? Spade was great. I worked with him twice on Just Shoot Me, then later, uh, years later on uh, Rules of Engagement. Spade's a pro, that's all I gotta say about him. He's a pro, he's prepared, he's professional, he's got a good attitude, he's just easy to work with. Uh, I'd love to produce one day, but I don't know what the best way to show the skills I have to offer. I have a small body of work, but I hate the feeling of shoving my work in people's faces. Michael Santos Films. I'm going to do a podcast with um, with my buddy Jim Serpico, who produced uh, he produced Marin, uh, small kind of small, you know, as well as other as well as other shows. And he's going to be a guest. I would subscribe to my podcast so that when that comes, when that interview drops you'll be able to hear from him because he will, he'll get, tell you what to do. He'll tell you what to do. It's called Screenwriters Need to Hear This. You can go to michaeljammon.com to learn where, it's at, where it is. What is your favorite master plot to write? I don't even know what that is. Your tip on clams changed my perspective. Good, Carlos, you're listening. I work in props as a showrunner. What do you look for in a good prop department? Good question. Um, you know, so truthfully, I don't... Uh, I don't hire the props guy, or, you know, that's usually the producer hires and, you know, they can, but in terms of props, I've, I've worked with prop people who were not prepared or who just, there was one guy in particular who was a little, you know, he was a little stuck in his ways and he didn't last long. But for the most part, prop guys are pretty easy to work with. You know, they're just not difficult people. So I, I, I don't really have a good answer for you. What's the key to writing a good comedy with raw emotion? Bill Hader lookalike. The key, again, if you want to learn how to do it, take my course. But it's not like I can give you a one-word answer. There's no key. There's no key. The key is education. How different is writing a script than writing a movie, TV script? Very, very little difference. If you could do one, you could do the other. As a matter of fact, so when I was writing on King of the Hill, you know, me and my partner were writing on King of the Hill, that's when 
there's so many King of the Hill writers at the time that were also selling movies. That's when we decided to write and sell movies. So we, we solved a couple on the side as well. It's, if you can do one, you can do the other. And I, and I teach both in my screenwriting course. That's at michaeljammon.com slash course if you're interested. Susan Hunter author. Is it appropriate or annoying for writers to include the music they see to accompany a movie? Susan never put the movie in it. Never, ever put the, never put the, never put music in the movie, in your script. Never, ever. Uh, first of all, I can tell you a million reasons why. That's not your job. That's the job of either the director or the showrunners to put the music in. Number two, music cues cost a fortune to license. And this may not even have the budget. And you don't even know how much it costs. Like it, I'm telling you from experience, it costs a fortune. And third, if you can't express the emotion that you need to put if your scene can't live without a music cue telling you that it's sad or happy or whatever the music cue is, then you failed your job as a, as a writer. You're not doing your job. Fourth, you're asking the reader to imagine it. Well, what if I don't know that song? Now I'm supposed to imagine it? And, wh and what part of the song am I supposed to imagine? You're asking way too much work for, from the, the reader. No one wants to read the music cues. It's not your job. And fifth, I can't tell you how many times I've gone into... Uh, into like editing and thought, okay, in my mind, I want to put um, a really fast song here because this is a chase scene. That's too fast. And then the editor goes, yeah, but let's try a real slow song. Let's try, let's try a, a classical piece. And, and I'll watch it go, hey, that's better than I imagined. Like you just don't know until you see it, until you watch Like sometimes you put the opposite cue. It, there's, it's, not, it's not your place to put music. That's, if you're putting the music cue, it's because you want to do everyone else's job but your own. And your job is to write, not to put music cues in. Woo! Susan, I gave you five answers. Dimitri Martin. Thank you, Brian. That's exactly right. Dimitri's comedy is very different from, you know, Mark Maron's comedy. Very different. So whatever you want to do, thank you for reminding me. Uh, can you network without being in person? If so, how do you make connections? It's pretty hard. Pretty hard. You know, I'll say this. Uh, there are people in my, in my course, we have a private Facebook group. And so those are the people who've gone through the course and we, in that Facebook group, they network with each other. Uh, they trade scripts, they give notes to each other, but they're also using the language that I taught them. So they're all on the same page. They all go, remember when Michael said this? Like, you know, then they, so I think it's helpful, but there are other Facebook groups, obviously where, uh, you know, screenwriting groups, this is a private one just for the course. Those I've seen, those are a lot, tend to be a lot of posers, a lot of people, a lot of haters, a lot of people kind of bagging on each other. I don't find that in this group. I don't, I actually, I know it. I've never seen that. I think people are very supportive in the, the group we have. I hope to one day work with you. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Christophs, Mr. Christophs. How does one contact to get original music on a TV show? Who does one contact to get original music on a TV show? I don't know. Are you a musician or are you, what are you, a super, music supervisor? If your show ideas keep getting pitch meetings, but no one has picked it up, and it's been five or six years. Do you think the pitch rep presentation needs to be rethought or do you just keep pitching? Joey, I would give up on the idea. No joke. I'd give up on the idea. Come up with more. Is this your only idea? Come up with more. You're not a writer if you only have one idea. It's time. It's time to move on from that idea. And maybe your pitch is not that good. And maybe you're not a writer. Honestly, if you're not a writer, are you, have you written anything? Forget about pitching anything. Have you written anything? Do you have a script to show? That's what I want to know. Your thoughts on Stallone? He wrote Rocky. It was a great movie. Is there a different approach for breaking into writing for kids animation versus traditional TV writing? I don't know. I've never done kids. I've never done kids animation. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Thanks for investing in making the course. You're welcome, Pop Zop Boom. What are your thoughts on Paul Thomas Anderson? He ever went to film school or took classes? Um... You know, some of his movies are great and some I'm not crazy about, but uh, some are great and some aren't, in my opinion. But, I, you know, I don't have any, I don't have any thoughts. Some people don't need to go to film school, but they make film school their own. They, you know, it doesn't mean they don't study, you know. It doesn't mean, like, who didn't go to film school? Uh, whatever. I don't want to. Do you personally do any VO work? I've done some voiceover work. I wouldn't call myself a voiceover actor, but I do have a few credits. I want to get on Blacklist. Do you know Ben Axelrad? He teaches TV writing. Any good? No idea. None. I, no idea. Any thoughts on Donald Belisario? He's prolific. Well, I've been in his house. 
I've been reading his name on the credits since I was a kid, and I just read his name for four decades later on the Quantum Leap. Yeah, I don't know if you, I don't know how involved he is with the new Quantum Leap, but uh, yeah. I'm thinking about doing something different within the industry. I can't do the rat race anymore. Maybe one day I'll write again, but for now I'm not feeling it. All right, well, take a break. Take a break. Who does one contact to produce original to pitch original music to a show? I'm going to have, uh, I don't know, I don't have the answer to that. It would be the music supervisor, but I don't know how you get in touch with them. It's the music supervisor. When you write a spec for ongoing procedural show, do you engage with long-running arcs or ignore them? <clears throat> when you write a spec for an ongoing, uh, you can ignore them. You don't have to, because by the time you write it, the arc is going to be over. So you can ignore it. It's, under, it's understandable. You can make your episode stand alone. I'm going to talk for a couple more minutes. I'm going to do a quick plug, and then I'm going to get off. If you're in the L.A. or Boston area, tickets are available. Come see my one-man show, A Paper Orchestra. Go to michaeljammon.com slash live for tickets. And they're going, 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 gone. Um, a couple more. <clears throat> Is it possible to make it in screenwriting in any other major cities other than L.A., New York, Chicago, etc.? Uh, no, I think you have to make it in L.A. I think you have to make it in L.A. I, I, you know, I've talked about this before, Nicole, but um, the movie, where's Hollywood? Hollywood is in Hollywood, Los Angeles. There's film production in other cities, but Hollywood is always here. And it, it, this is where contacts are made. This is where the hustlers come. If you want to make it in another city, it's not impossible, but you're tying one hand behind your back. What are your L.A. dates, Hadley Bass? I will be, <clears throat> uh, I think, December 10th and 11th in Los Angeles at the, uh, uh, yeah, in Atwater Village. And for tickets, go to michaeljammon.com slash live. And yeah, only two performances in LA and they will sell out. They Because I did six last time and they all sold out. And then people were like, oh, I missed it. I'm like, oh, good thing. I wish, you know, I wish it could come. Wish it could come. But I want you to come. I want you not miss it. So please go get it while you can. Um... Do I produce movies? No, I've sold a couple, but I don't produce movies. Who does one? Oh, we did that already. Um, why don't your lives stay up? I don't know. We, why, Cat Love in the Sky, we repost my lives on my YouTube channel. So go there to watch them. Uh, at Michael Jammin Writer. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. We repost them there. Uh, yeah, that's what we do. How are you? I'm great. Uh, any more? Michael St St Santos Film, absolutely subscribe to the podcast and love the last two guest star podcasts. Yeah, I'm going to do some more guest stars. How, uh, I'm just calling my friends up. How, how difficult is it finding work as a writer? Do you really need to have an early background to be successful? Uh, it's, it is difficult. Yeah, I mean, very difficult. Uh, just so you know, there are, about the number, there are about the same number of active writers in the Wright Writers Guild of America as there are players in the NFL. It's the number is very similar. So you're talking about playing, you know, how difficult is it to be in the NFL? It's hard. It's hard. You got to be good. You have to be prepared and ready. Most people just think, yeah, I'll just, you know, it, you don't just show up. Can you just, can you describe a comedy? Pa oh, I did that. Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I can't describe a comedy packet for SNL. I never worked there. Thank you again for speaking to my class on Tuesday. Oh, you're welcome, Olivia. Good luck to you. Yeah, I, I did a talk at, their, uh, at Loyola, Loyola Marymount. It's hard to say Loyola. Have you guys discussed this at all? Should you? Maybe you guys should talk about this. What are your thoughts on working for a lit agency as an entry-level job for an aspiring screenwriter? Nicole, I worked uh, for William Morris for three days, and I was fired on day two. Good luck. I think it's a good idea. If you can do it, do it. I hated it. I hated it, Nicole. How can one work with you? But it's a good idea. How can one work with you? I have a lot of great relationships with producers, but as you know, all writers aren't good. Well, the real fashion, you can't work with me. Because I work with, I work with, uh, yeah, I don't work, <laughs> you can't work with me. I have a writing partner and, you know, we, we sell shows and we do our thing. And I, and I get on here and I try to help people do their thing, but you can't work with me. Ain't that a bummer? Ain't that a bummer? Did you ever write for a project you knew was doomed from the start? Absolutely. They paid me money. I go, this is doomed. But the money was green and I spent it. I spent it all. 
I'm not on Facebook would like to be part of the group if I take if I take your course. Uh, yeah, well, M to write, um, you know, you can always make an account on Facebook and just join the group. I mean, that's easy. A lot of people, yeah. So if you, the minute, you know, that's easy. So just sign up for the course and then we invite you into the group. Two steps. Um, any advice on finding screenwriting groups that are advanced or professional writers? Uh, no, I mean, like I said, there are Dr. Ven Williams. I'm, I know there are screenwriting groups on Facebook. Uh, some of them have massive, like 50,000 people in them, you know, um, the, the one for my course is, is much, much smaller, but they're active. And, uh, I think they're a good group of people, you know, that's part of the benefits of taking the course. I know they're a good group of people. They, I mean, honestly, they have their own table reads, you know, online and they help each other. I mean, it's good for them. Can you describe a, a con? Okay. I can't cause I, I can't do that. You're a wealth of information. Thank you, Maze. How I contact you or your any WhatsApp number or email? Well, you don't re- you don't contact me. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You know how many people try to contact me? You don't. Come to NYC. I mean, I'm on here. Like a lot of I, I I'm I'm here. Ask me a question. Go ahead. Ask a question. I'll answer it. You like how do you contact me? We're talking right now. Come to NYC. Zav the world. I'm planning to. DM me your email address and I'll put you on the list so that when I am in NYC, because I'm from New York, when I do come to New York, uh, I'll send you an email and you'll come to see the show. What do you think about Bobby Hill? Thank you. Thorough answer. You're welcome, Susan Hunter, author. Is it easier to sell a screenplay or a TV pilot? Probably TV pilot, but I don't think it's e- I don't think either one are easy. When selling a show, do you have the outline plus the episodes or just the arenas? The Nate Jones, here's, here's the question, the Nate Jones. You've got to start listening to my podcast. You've got to start listening to my YouTube. Start watching the, my, if you're interested in this, get on my watch list, michaeljammon.com slash watch list, because you're asking me, you're really asking for yourself, and you're really misinformed. If you want to know what, how I do it, or do you want to know how you should do it? Because they're two very different things. And so you're new to my page and I say, welcome, welcome to my page. You have a lot of learning to do and it's all free. You just gotta, you just gotta put in the time and watch these videos because I explain how it's all done, okay? Uh, uh, any more questions that I'm gonna blast through? Jamming Facebook table reads are where it's at. We have a blast. Yeah, Johnny Pumpkin Seed. I mean, you guys are, you guys are killing it in the, in the, in the group. Bambi Balboa. These are some people in the um, in my in, who've taken my course. They're in the private Facebook group, and look at them. They're they're watching, and uh, you know, good things are coming from these people. I know that good things are coming from them. Uh, okay, did that already? Can you, boy? I think this. Uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. My dialogue feels lackluster. Any way to get better at writing dialogue? Well, yeah, and I talk about this a lot in the course. There's a lot of things you could do. One of the easiest things you can do is uh, go uh, to a coffee shop and listen to people. You know, listen to how they talk. Listen to how they talk. People talk indirectly. And I see so much so much bad writing is writing directly, whereas writing good writing is writing indirectly. Okay, there's a huge difference. So I'll, I'll talk about this real fast, and, and then I'll, I'm going to bounce off. Uh, writing directly is saying what you feel. I'm angry. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm jealous. I'm mad. Like that's like of a two-year-old talks. Uh, indirect writing is is not saying is saying it without saying it. And I go into more detail what that means in the course. But um, you know, someone tagged me this on on you uh, on Instagram or something. You know, what do you think of my dialogue? And like, dude, don't tag me with your dialogue. I'm not your instructor. You know, you're just some dude. And to be honest, it was terrible. And I didn't want to say that. I was like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, anyway. Do you go to places to people watch for ideas or characters? No, I don't. Um, but uh, I don't. I may just live my life and, and, and observe. I, I, I enter the world. Any plans to come to Vancouver? I'd love to come to Vancouver. Uh, so yeah, uh, KB, DM me your email address. When I get there, certainly when I start touring with the book, I'll, I'll let you know I'm, I'm in Vancouver. 
you ever speak at colleges? It's funny that you say that full of Maloney films. I just spoke at LMU over the, um, uh, like a week ago or something. And uh, if you want me to come to your college, have your professor reach out to me. Or maybe you are a professor. I don't know. Uh, just DM me. Uh, we can maybe figure something out. Craftsman's in the group. I had a script do really well in the NBC Fellowship. I'm not sure if I should polish or just burn it down and start over to make it strong or just move on. What criteria would you use to decide? I don't know. I mean, if you feel it's just the dialogue, you need to punch up and punch up the dialogue. But if you, if you feel the story holds water and you feel like your act breaks are popping uh, and you feel like the characters are real and true, then yeah, maybe you just need to polish on it. You know, but I don't, I don't know. Why not do both, dude? Why not polish it and then get to work on your next thing? You know, I'd say you get better. Get to work on your next thing. Because you know your next piece will be even better. How did I tell you, how did I tell my writer that certain scenes are unnecessary and will make the shoot more difficult? You just, you just did. That's what you just said. If a scene can be cut and the story still holds together, you don't shoot it. You don't shoot it. If the scene can be cut it sounds like the writer is not terribly good because every you, you shouldn't be able to cut a scene. That You shouldn't be able to have this conversation. If you can cut the scene and the story still makes sense and holds together, you don't shoot it. It's unnecessary. No one wants to watch it. Is it a good idea to film a really good pilot episode and then stop that, shop that around? I might only have enough resources for a 40-minute episode or maybe even shorter uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't shop that around. Nope, I wouldn't. I wouldn't at all. I would. I've talked about this before, Xander. I'd make if you if you're interested in shooting your own content, great. I would do a, a short. I would do like a short series of ten minutes each. I'd put that up on YouTube, build up a giant following. Then when it becomes popular, then you can think about selling it. But I wouldn't shoot your freaking pilot script. I wouldn't sink a nickel into that. It's not going to sell. It's not going to sell. And if you don't know why it doesn't sell, then you're new to my page, you're new to my podcast, welcome. I have a lot of free stuff to tell you. You you have to just go listen to it because that's not how I would do it by any stretch. I've never sunk, I've never put a, a nickel of my own money into anything. You know why? I take other people's money. They got to pay me. They got to pay me. All right, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to bounce. I answered a lot of questions that I'm, I'm done. To, I'm talked out and I got some work to do. So that's it. If you're in Boston or in LA, come get tickets now at michaeljammon.com slash live. I'll be in Amesbury, Massachusetts, November 12th and 13th. Tickets are going fast. And in LA, I will be again uh, December 10th and 11th. I hope to see you at the show. And, uh, and that's it. Everyone be safe. Have a good weekend. And until next time, I'll, I'll come promote my show again uh, the next day or two. Okay, everyone, be well.